Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Larry Lurcy. Welcome back to the channel. I've got another great video for you today. We're going to do another Luminar Neo video. This time I'm going to work with a portrait and I'm going to show you what my workflow would be going through, making some corrections, and then going ahead and enhancing it and seeing what we can do with it to uh, just try and make it better than it was when we started. If you don't already have Luminar Neo, there is a link down below in the description where you can check it out. But without any further ado, let's roll the intro. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and this is the image we're going to be working with. The bulk of my editing today we're going to be doing in Neo, but I'm going to be using Photoshop at the beginning at the end for um, a few things that I think work better in Photoshop. For example, Neo has a layers system, but it's not quite as robust as Photoshop, and for the, the way I like to use it, um, I, I think it works better to use the two of these kind of in union with each other. So first thing I want to do is take my image here and copy this layer, drag it down and copy it. And we'll just call this Neo. So I'm going to be doing my Neo work on a separate layer. In case we don't like it, we'll just get rid of it or we go too far with the effects, whatever. Um, I've got it on its own layer. So let's jump into the software and take a look. All right, so here in Neo, of course, we have all the, the templates over here, the presets that we can use, which would obviously work, but we're going to be a little more specific about it today, and so we're going to go into Edit. And, you know, you've got over here, you've got all your tools over here on the right, and then we've got Edits, which is a list of the things we've done, and we'll take a look at that here in a second. So I want to start with the face. So we're going to jump in here, do a little bit of face light, like that. It's just lighting up the face area, as the name implies. Uh, not going to mess around with slim face. I don't like changing the shape of the face. I feel like you're kind of getting into dangerous territory there with changing the way they look, so I don't like doing that. Uh, we'll come into eyes. I'm going to bump up that visibility a little bit. I love to do the iris flare and the eye enhancer. I am really bad about overdoing this, but I just can't help myself because it looks so cool. Uh, dark circles. She's got a little bit of dark underneath. We'll go ahead and hit it with a little bit, but there's not too much to work on there. And then the improved eyebrows just kind of fills things in. So I think all those work nicely. Uh, we can see the before and the after. Let me zoom in here on the face. There's the before and the after. So the eyes definitely pop out. I think we could even maybe pull back on the face light just a little bit like that. And we go under mouth. I like to bring the lip saturation up a little bit. I don't like adding red because I don't want to change the color um, of her lipstick. But um, I think that will work just like that. We don't have any teeth showing. So um, I'm pretty happy with that. I think the eyes are definitely jumping out now. We'll turn that off and go down to the next one, which is skin. And we're just going to kind of smooth out the skin just to touch using the skin AI. And probably just bump that out to about... 30, 35, see how that looks. Uh, bring up a little bit of shine removal. She doesn't have a whole lot of shine, but I like to do it a little bit because it just kind of smooths things out. Click on the skin defects, and that'll generally get rid of any blemishes and things like that, which is super handy. You just got to make sure that it doesn't take out something that you're wanting to keep. So you can kind of turn it off, turn it back on, make sure it's not knocking anything out that you wanted. But I think that looks pretty good. Let's look at the before. And the after. Just taking a little bit of the detail out of the skin, which I don't think you necessarily need. Okay, so we've gone through those two, and as you can see, we've got a two here under edits. If we click on edits, we've done skin and face. So if we need to get rid of one of those or um, go back and change some of our settings, we're able to do that, which is pretty cool. All right, next thing I want to do is fix this background. Uh, I've just got her on a plain seamless gray background. I want to put a texture in behind her. So this is where we're going to use the layer system. And we'll click on this little plus. You can see right now the only layer we have is the main image of her. So we'll hit this plus. All these options here for a lot of unusual type effects. You can even get more assets down here at the bottom. But I like to just use my own. And you can do load image to bring in your own texture on top. Just to save time, I went ahead and brought one in. It's just kind of a background here. So we've got that in place. We can change the blending mode to probably overlay. You could look at soft light. I think overlay works better. 
you can flip it and things like that. Mine's already kind of in the same exactly how I want it. I might just bring up the uh, opacity a touch. And um, I think I'm pretty happy with that when I have it how I want it. I'm going to go in and turn on masking. Now what i got to do, because you can see I've got it on the background, but I've also got it on her, and I don't want it on her. So uh, I'm going to turn on a brush, switch it to erase, and I can leave the strength at 100 for right now. Let's see what size of brush I have, about like that. So what I'll do is kind of do an initial, kind of staying well within the lines, but kind of make sure I really get all the middle part. Kind of like that. Still looks terrible, I know. Don't worry, we're going to fix it. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is get a little smaller brush. Come back in. Now I can get a little bit closer to the edge. It's okay to have a little bit of overlap. It won't really show up. What I don't want to happen is go too far into the background, and then I've got uh, a little glow around her, and I can kind of show you what that looks like. If, like if we go too far like that. Let's finish up here. At the top. And when I let go, it's going to show me. And you can see here I went too far and I've erased that texture, and now it looks weird. So I've got to switch back to paint. Come back in here and put that back in place. I can also fix, I get a little bit smaller brush. I can go ahead and paint in this area here, which needs to have texture back in it. Okay, I could even do a little bit in there. You don't have to get super picky about it because you're, you're not going to really notice it too much unless you make a big mistake. But I think that looks pretty good. I can also go back to properties and mess around with um, how much that texture shows up in the background. I think about 70% is good, so I'm just going to hit return to lock that in. All right, looks great. We can uh, continue to start doing things. And what I want to do is do them onto... Um, this top layer, I want to do something real quick on the texture layer. I want to come in here and bring up develop. Now we don't really have a dodge and burn system per se in Luminar Neo. It should be coming in a future update, I think, but right now it's not there. So the workaround on that is we're going to bring up develop. We're going to bring the whole thing down a little bit. Kind of like that. And then we're just going to mask Let's bring that strength way down, kind of a big soft brush. And so now what I will do is I will just mask in the dark down. I'm just trying to darken down the bottom part of this texture um, background. So kind of go like that. It's creating a little bit of a vignette around her. We could also go ahead a little bit if we wanted to hit that hand, but that could make a huge difference at this point. All right, there we go. Just a slight bit of darkening. Now, I want to go back to this image, and we're going to do a little more of that as well. So, in fact, let's do the opposite. Let's work on the lightning first. So I'm going to basically look. What I want to do here is enhance some of this highlights in the hair just to give them a little more shimmer. So I'm going to bring up the exposure, and I don't want to go so far that I've blown things out, but I want to go enough that it's got a, a noticeable lightness to it, like that. You can even go in under color. You could warm things up a touch if you want to add a little bit of warmth. Um, it just a little bit does a lot, but that still works. Um, and then come back here into masking, get a brush, bring that strength way down to you know 15 or 20. It's about 17. Keep a soft brush and bring this down a lot smaller, maybe even smaller than that. And now what I'm going to do is just try and hi highlight some of these highlight areas. So where there's a lighter area, I'm going to go over it with this. You can kind of see my work. You can see where it's making it red. That's showing me where it's happening. Love to do it like on these little twirls like this. There's a little piece. 
this kind of little S shape all the way down like that. Again, I'm trying to just stay on lighter areas. I go like that. Get a little sloppy here, but you get the idea. Okay, I think that looks nice. Then um, let me just try and do a quick before. There's a before, and you can see how that's lightened up the hair. All right, um, so let's take that out, and we'll open up another one. This time we'll go the opposite direction. We'll darken things down like that. Switch to mask, get a brush, bring the strength down. Now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to, um, let's put that about 15. We'll start out by doing this hand, darkening that down a touch, just because I still think that's a little too bright. And then I'm going to come back up in here in the hair and do this opposite of what I just did with the highlights, where I'm only going to color in some of the darker areas so that it stands out in contrast to the white areas. I'll try and do it in here. See that? It's just going to add a little more depth to the hair, as you'll see here in a second. Here we go. See the before and the after. Do a little bit more. Again, you don't want it's like any other sort of retouching or enhancement. If it's clear that you've done it, you've done too much. You want it to be where you can't really even tell it's it's happened. So I think that works well. I'll close that up. Last thing I want to do on here is do a little bit of a glow, which can just kind of give it a nice little softening. And it's on soft focus. I'm just going to bring this up to, if you see if you go all the way across, it just blows it all out. But it can take a little bit, like five or six. It just kind of takes the edge off a little bit. There's the before. So I think that looks nice. So I'm pretty happy with what we have here, but let's go ahead and hit apply. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna do a little more, but I want it on its own layer. So I'm gonna make another copy of this. And we'll call this Neo2. Let's bring this up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add uh, some stuff that's gonna initially kinda make it not look really good but it, it will come back. So uh, let's start with like the mystical. I'm gonna add uh, some of that, just gonna kind of give it this glowing look, add some smoothness to it, like that. All right, next thing I wanna do is get rid of the color in it. I want it to be black and white, so I'm gonna come into color, bring this uh, saturation down that it's a black and white. Uh, you can even go in and add a little film grain to it, which kind of goes opposite to the whole blurring thing. But I, I like it to have a little bit, bit of texture when I'm doing this, and you'll see why when we get kind of to the next step. So I've got this black and white, which actually kind of looks cool in and of itself. Let's go ahead and keep that for now. And I want to add a little more darkness down here. Uh, we've started to get really heavy vignetting up in the top and so I want to try and add a little more darkening down here in the bottom so we'll go back up here to do our little develop trick again where we bring down that dark and then we're gonna let's do the uh, shadows the other way there we go and then we'll go to masking get a brush bring the strength down to about 30 25 percent big brush this time and just kind of fill in this corner a little bit just to try and balance off some of that heavy uh, dark shadowing at the top. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
but just a little bit. You can see from there to there. Just kind of brings the focus in a little bit. Let's go ahead and apply that. Now what I want to do is I want to change the blending mode on this top one, probably to soft light. Overlay kind of where I think we'll go soft light. And it's going to be a little too much, but that's okay. We can just pull it back a little bit. There we go. Whatever seems comfortable. So, there we go. There is the um, black and white layer on top, and then we've got the color Neo retouching on the bottom layer. I'm going to highlight both of these. Just hold down Shift and click on both. Put them both in their own folder here. We'll call this the Neo. So now we can go back and we can say, here was our original. Here's what we ended up with which I think looks great. I think it's got a lot more drama to it. Um, it's got some retouching to it, but it hasn't gone too crazy overboard. If you decide, you know what, we went too far with all this, just not to your taste, not a problem. You just come here to the opacity. You can dial it down until you're comfortable. You know, maybe go to 90%, whichever. But I think uh, really from starting here, ending up there, I think that's got a ton more impact and drama and a pretty simple process to go through. So that's how I would work through an image similar to this one. So there you have it. I think that was a success. I definitely think we ended up with a better portrait than we started with and it didn't take too long to do. So I was happy with the results. Would love to hear your comments. Let me know what you think and uh, things we could have done differently. But that's all for now. Hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.